Hello and welcome to the C&SI Monitoring Academy. My name is Mark Leftwich and I am the Level 2 Team Lead for Monitoring. After watching this video, you'll be able to set traces on the TEMS component, you'll be able to increase the size of the log files, and you'll also be able to verify the trace you've set is working. Our aim at the Academy is simple. We're all IBMers that use these products daily and we want to try and pass on that hands-on experience to you. I hope you find this video useful. Be sure to click thumbs up if you do. Today what I'm going to show you is how to set tracing on the Tivoli Enterprise Monitoring Server, the Thames. You may have PMRs, you may get requests for people to increase tracing on your system. It's very simple to do, so hopefully steps will break it down. First off, there's two ways of doing this. One is through the GUI and the other way is through editing a file. I'm going to show you both so you can use whichever takes your preference. The first one is the GUI. Now we'll open something called the mTEMS. This you'll have to do start all programs, IBM Tivoli Monitoring, Manage Tivoli Enterprise Monitoring Services. So first thing we'll do is identify which component we want to set the trace on. This For this tutorial it's the TEMS. We'll select the TEMS with a left click. We will then right click, do Advanced, Edit Trace Prams. Now at the top here you can see error under the RAS1 filter. That is the current tracing that's set on the Thames. I will show you later how to verify the tracing set. This is where you'll need to modify the trace. If you're going to modify a trace on the Thames, you'll see something that looks similar to an open bracket, unit, colon, and then the component of the Thames we want to increase the trace on. So this could be something like KDS, and you may see a filter type of all. That's quite a common one. Going down to the next section, you can see we can set some size of the log. So the first line here says maximum log size per file. This is how big each individual log file will get. The next line down is maximum number of log files per session. So at the moment we have five log files of five megabytes each. That means you've got 25 megabyte of logging currently. Depending on the level of trace here, you may get asked to increase the logging as it may generate quite a lot of trace. What you can do is simply up the trace here, change that to 10 megabytes, or maybe increase the number of logs so you have many small logs. Totally up to you. Maximum number of logs is the total number of logs that ITM will retain after multiple restarts. Down the bottom here you've got the KDC debug settings. This is rarely turned on, but if we need to do deep level diagnosis on your Thames, we may ask you to come down here and select this to yes. Um, there's no need to turn that on for any reason unless you're requested to by IBM. So here we have increased the error level on the logs to KDS all. If you click OK, you'll be presented with a box. Now here you have a choice. It says, to implement any changes, the service must be recycled. Would you like to do that now? The simple question to this is, if you're running a production environment, you may not be able to recycle just off the cuff like that. You may want to click No. The changes you made will be saved for next time the TEM is restarted. If you do have access and can you do that now, you can just click yes and the Thames will go and recycle. The second way of doing this is to do it through environment files. On Windows, you'll have to go to your default candle home path, so where you installed ITM. On my box, it's purely default. So we have C, IBM, ITM, and we want the CMS directory. CMS is the candle management server, the Thames in this case and you're looking for a KBB ENV file so you can see it here this is a flat text file there's nothing particularly special about it you can open it in any text editor you have on your system okay I've opened this file in notepad for ease and um, what I'm going to ask you to do is if you look down through the file you will be finding a setting that says KBB RAS1 error I'll highlight that for you in the video you can see here that line has error bracket unit KDS all. It's picked up the change we've just made ready for the restart. If you were going to do this from scratch, default is always error in ITM. Um, I wouldn't recommend you change that to anything else unless you're asked to. Error is purely error trapping. So if there's something that goes wrong on your system and you've got error logged, it will keep logging all the errors that come in and we'll have a good chance if we need to review that of what's gone wrong. And if you put the trace too high, it will put stress on the components if, if running on for a long period of time. And if you remove it entirely, you'll have no trace at all. So default is error. It should look like that. If you wanted to put the same trace on in the environment file, you do exactly the same thing. You just type it in. So unit colon KDS 
all close bracket your change has been made now you need to save the file ready for when the Thames is restarted if you click save at the top you can then shut that file now if you want to verify that the trace is taken what we can do is restart the Thames so I'll recycle by right clicking and then click recycle again we're going to go back into the directory structure we're using candle home again so IBM ITM by default this time we want to go to the logs directory so as you can see at the top here we have C IBM ITM logs if you sort this by date modified okay, we scroll down the directory and we're looking for the number one log for the Thames the MS component uh, here to read the logs it's hostname underscore component the two letter component so for Thames you've got MS then you've got the timestamp dash number of the log the logs work in 1 to 5 by default, 1 will always stay static and never get overwritten, 2 to 5 will. So if you have high tracing like the one I've just put on, the logs will wrap very quickly. Therefore, 2 to 5, it goes 2, 3, 4, 5. When it needs to write to another log, it will go back to 2 and it will keep doing that pattern. So bear that in mind if you've got high trace levels on. Again, these are just flat text files so you can open them in any text editor you wish. Okay, now that the file's open, at the top of every number one log, we call this the RAS1 header. So here you'll find all information about your system, how much memory it's got, what type it is. But importantly for this tutorial, it will show you what is the current setting of log. So KBB underscore RAS1 error bracket unit KDS all. That's the one we've just set. Bear in mind, when you're setting logs, the KBB RAS1 header will always show you the log setting from restart. Once the text file has been closed, you can shut down all of the boxes you were using before. The Thames can now just be left running until the point in which you need to capture the log. Support will identify to you how long this should be. Normally it's around half an hour, 30 minutes, but obviously that will be communicated to you. Thank you for watching the video. If you have any comments or feedback, please feel free to use the comments box below. I've also added several helpful links that will link you to our blogs on DevWorks and other video content. If you like the video, please remember to click the thumbs up.